Hey guys, I'm going to be going and doing another Gehenna of the Ultimate Star Clear. Um, I know people are looking for like a seriously, seriously low-end budget run. I tried a few ideas. It came up quite short on damage capping. So the option is to either go like true serious budget and not damage cap or damage cap and just try to go a little cheaper. So we're gonna, in this video, we're gonna damage cap, but we're not gonna use things like Esther, Kane, Roberta, Dark Rain, you know, all the newest premium and really strong units. Um, so we're gonna do it without those, which is pretty hard to do. So this boss, um, it's a demon, and while technically it does have lower spirit, it's only got slightly lower spirit than defense and mages other than dark rain or angela if you have her are just not worth using just to be completely honest here so we're gonna go with a physical team even though it does have slightly higher defense not that much higher though um now the thing with this boss i'm gonna show you a libra thanks to strife that got me this picture um, this, as you can see, the boss's resistances are 100% across the board. What that means, because its baseline resist is so high, you want to go with the biggest imperil possible. So we're going to be using a 130 wind imperil with bulwark and a 25 stacking field imperil with our Moogle Mog. So I really recommend... Um, for extra damage here, you go with a field that lowers resistance. For example, Wind or Ice with Mog, Fire with Lena, Thunder with Secura, Water with Nicole, Earth with Sea Card, or Light Element with Nyx. I don't think there's a Dark and Peril field on Global just yet. That comes with Renoa later. Um, but yeah, so I recommend a Wind and Peril field. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, an imperil field of any element you choose, because as you can see, it's neutral to all, or it's 100% to all elements, so just pick the one that your team can build around. So we're going to go with the wind party with this team. So let's get in here and do a clear, and then I will show you the, te the gear and the, all that at the end of the video. Okay, so because no one does a good LB buff on this party, we're going to use old school. We're going to go Zidane's STMR that you probably haven't seen that in a while. We're going to bring that back for another fight. So Aaron is going to sing Zidane's STMR, and he'll be singing that until the kill turn, which is going to be turn six. Uh, the boss does two physical AoEs every single turn, um, a fire magic attack every even turn, and then Flare Sting every two turns, starting on turn three. So the way we're going to do with it, deal with it, Mog is going to Great Nature's Grace. That's a, um, a stat buff for the party. We're going to Guard Titus. We're going to Mirage one of those AoEs with Carton. We're going to use Bulwark to um, Tonberry Boogie so that we have physical mitigation. And we're going to do Kupo Clang to accuracy down the boss. And Venera is going to Armor Cleaver to break the boss by 85%. So we take less damage. Now our support units are evading. And Titus is guarding. We took 6 damage. A little bit of damage taken is totally fine. So we, we basically mitigated all that AoE to nothing almost. Okay, this turn we're going to Mixtape on Bulwark. Carton is just going to Thousand Needles one of the AoEs again. We're going to guard Titus again. We're going to guard Venera. And every even turn, like I mentioned, there's magical AoE fire. Now you can like resist it. You can cover it. You can reflect it. We're going to Nethocyte it with power to destroy Nethocyte. That's Ash's STMR. If you don't have that, you can use something like, um, uh, what's it called? The original Nethocyte source works as well. So there we go. Or if you're using like Zahn, you can Mystical Mirror, stuff like that. Okay, so turn three. Turn three is going to be a Flare Sting. We're going to guard Titus. Now what Flare Sting is, it's a single target 400% fire in peril and then a fire accuracy attack. So to deal with that, we're going to guard Carton. Um, we're going to use Moogle Mog to bar Ferega. We're going to use Bulwark to double. We're going to mixtape again, and we're going to Glee and Gusto. That's a magic mitigation for later. 
Now we're going to shift Venera, and we're going to four stack Mirage with Shadow Serpent. Now if you don't have Venera, you're using like Lara Croft or Hawkeye as your breaker, that's okay. As long as the boss is broken, Shadow Sting won't deal that much damage. You should be totally fine here if you don't have a four stack Mirage. Um, but we do, so we're going to use it. Yeah, it, you should be totally fine without a four stack Mirage. You'll just take maybe a little bit more damage, but it shouldn't be enough damage to fail the damage taken score. So there we go. So there's the Shadow Sting, and we Miraged it. Okay. So this turn, we're going to go to the shift form with Bulwark. Uh, actually, not yet. Not yet. We're going to go back to the base form with Venera, because as you can see, that was a really big fire and peril on our Provoker. So we're going to go back to the base form of Venera, and we're going to Rage Beast Roar herself to dispel that fire and peril. So, and she's wearing fire resist gear, too. So now she's back to fire immune. So we're, now we're going to use the shifted LB of Bulwark, that's a 350% stat buff, which is going to be helpful for later. We're going to just guard Titus again this turn. Um, Carton will go ahead and put up Cursed Gift for a Fist in Peril. And Mogulmog will use Nethysite again. Now, for some reason, the Nethysite usually doesn't work on turn 4. I don't know why, but it's okay. We've got Fire Resist, and we've got um, Magic Mitigation and all that, so... Yeah, I don't know why the Death Sight doesn't work on turn 4, but it doesn't. I don't know. It, eh, whatever. Who cares? We took, we took 30 damage. No big deal. Anyway, we're going to be killing the boss next turn. So, what we're going to do, we're going to shift Carton, and we're going to shift the LB. This is going to give him a modifier boost. It's going to deal a decent chunk of damage to the boss. We're not imbued and all yet, but it's still going to hurt the boss a little bit. There we go. It, it's, it's fine. It shouldn't kill the boss. That's okay. Now Titus is going to Tybus' Spirit. You know, that, that, is, that is a premium STMR that you may not have, but we got to use the, these kind of power levels to damage cap this boss. This boss is hard to damage cap. So Venera is going to Marauder's Blade for a 90% defense break. Now we're going to do that Wind and Peril Field with N Mog of Narshi. And Bulwark is going to Tempest Tango. That's the 130 in peril, as well as um, the uh, Wind Imbue and Wind Amplify. And then we're just going to Bergamot's Ballad to Demon Killer for the party. Okay. So he's going to Flare Sting again, but we're going to kill next turn, so we don't really care about the Fire in peril anymore. There's the Flare Sting. It's actually on Carton, because Carton's provoking, but whatever. He evaded it. It's fine. Okay. So, here we go. So the boss has a 90 defense break, a big wind in peril, fist in peril, wind in peril field. So we can see here at the top left window, his effective wind resist is negative 55, which is a lot better than negative 20, which is what it would be if we weren't stacking an imperil field. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use the SLB of Arin. That's going to Katana in peril as well, and Titus is using a Katana. He's going to SLB also. We're going to support chain with Narshi Mog with Mughal Vali. We're going to support chain, which is Stardust Ray. We're going to support chain Stardust Ray with our Venera. Carton's going to Frenzy. Now, Bulwark does have Bolting Strike in his kit, but it's all AoE, and it will get canceled if you try that on the kill turn. So we're going to use single target Bolting with Blue Wave. That's a triple Bolting single target. It will not get canceled. Um, it is water element though, and the boss is currently immune to water element, meaning we're going we're gonna to need Titus's SLB to go first to imperil water so the chain works. But that's okay, the timing works out. So the way the timing is going to work, we're going to use Auron to SLB first. He's very, very slow. Um, that's going to put up a katana imperil. A moment later, we're going to send Titus as well as the Stardust Ray Chainers, and... Um, that's going to imperil the boss to water. After a moment, as soon as you see Arin ride onto the screen on his life raft, then we're going to use the bolting strike chain from Carton and Bulwark. At that, at that point, the chain will be already max modifier because Bulwark is chaining wrong element with a water element Bulwark. That's okay because the chain will already be max modifier. Okay, so this, because I'm not using the meta units like Esther and Kane and all that, 
I have to rely on some good variants to damage cap this guy, so I'm going to cut the video. This might take one or two runs before I get a good variance roll. We don't need that high of variance, but we do need variance to push us over that 20.2 billion required. So see you in a moment when the variance cooperates. Alright guys, um, the first try didn't work with variance. We got 19.6. Uh, so let's try again with a little bit higher variance, hopefully. 115 chain count score, correct. Now we need a 20.2 or better variance roll. Come on, game. 21.2, so we did 100 billion, no, 1 billion higher than we needed. There we go. So two-handed variance is definitely a thing. Um, it only took me two tries. The first try didn't work. Second try did work. Uh, so there it is. So here's the damage breakdown. Um, we've got Full Moon Carton, who did about 6 billion. Uh, that's pretty pretty typical for him. Uh, Legendary Aran, actually a little bit on the low end for his his max variance. He got 7.6. He's gone as high as like 8.5 um, with my team. And then Titus. Titus actually got a high variance roll. He usually does about 7 billion. He got 7.7, .7, which is, you know, high enough. So there is our perfect score run without using Esther or Kane or Dark Rain or Roberta. Those are the four big boys that really help you damage cap this guy. Um, if you don't have any of those, though, uh, you know, it's a little harder. But we got it done with this party. So again, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, um, you really want to go with uh, a party that can stack those imperils. The key to this boss is big elemental imperil. So imperil fields are where it's at. So here's the party we did use. So Bulwark has full evasion and some LB fill so that he can just avoid the AoE physicals, take less damage, you know. Um, blue wave so he can support chain. Shift, shift form, basically the same thing. Um, apparently I forgot to gear the shift form in all evasion. It didn't really matter. We took an extra, like, you know, the boss only deals like 50 damage a hit, um, with his AoE physical. So it's, it's pretty minor. As long as it's less than 5,000 total damage, you're fine. So there we go. Um, Carton in the base form. Obsidian Bracer. This helps to keep the boss broken. You know, we did use Armor Cleaver on Venera, um, which is an 85 break, but, uh, it only lasts three turns. And I could have done it again, but... Obsidian Bracer is just convenient. Um, full Evasion, and then Thousand Needles in the base form so that we can help uh, help with those Mirages. Shift Form is a double hand fist build against uh, Demons, which is pretty easy for card. He gears for Demons very, very easily. Um, I, I am using the Leave It To Me card. I know people said, please don't use those cards, but this this fight was hard to damage cap, and um, we I actually had to rely on Variants. So, you know, if I'm not, if I'm using like, you know, Esther and Kane. I can definitely use very cheap gear, and they can carry the fight by themselves. But if I'm not using, like, Esther and Kane, then I kind of got to use gear to make up for the difference for weaker units. You know, Carton's good and all, but Carton is a little bit old at this point. Um, so max Demon Killer and max everything else, 6,500 attack power. Uh, Legendary Guardian Aran, you know, again, this one is... Now, mine is EX3. EX3 is not important. EX2 is totally fine. Um, I actually specific, I specifically did not use the EX3 premium card because you don't need EX3 card. It helps, obviously, and that would be a way bigger damage gain if I did use it, but I didn't want to use that. Um, Zidane's STMR finally, com finally comes out of the closet after being benched for like four months. Um, very helpful because Auron and Titus both benefit from a bigger LB, LB damage buff. And that helps. Um, max Demon Killer. And we're using a cheapy card because I didn't want to use the premium card. Maxed LB, maxed Demon Killer. So we are using we are, we are using some STMRs, to be fair, but um, not the premium card. So we kind of lowered the budget a little bit, but it is still... It's hard to damage cap this guy. Uh, so Venera is our passive provoke evader. I didn't use the diadem because people asked me don't use the diadem, so I didn't. Um, pass her Provoke Evasion. She is using a water weapon. That way we can dual element chain with Mughal Mog and get a little bit of qu quicker chain building. It helps a little bit. Um, also in the base form, in the base form only, 100% fire resist and the Rage Beast Roar so we can get rid of that Flare Sting and Peril. Shift form, pass her Provoke Evasion. We're only shifted on turn three so we don't need any fire resist. There we go. 
So Mogul Mog was our choice of um, Imperil Field. Um, I went with him because he, he's a five star. Anyone can you will see him. And Wind has you know synergy with Arin and Bulwark, and Bulwark does Demon Killer. So Wind is a pretty decent team to build around. I think Thunder is overall better because you know Esther and Kane, but uh, with Ramos to cure for the Imperil Field. But uh, Mogul Mog does fine. So he, he was our source of Nethysite. This is optional. You don't need this. As you saw, the boss's magic does like 50 damage. You can just eat the damage. It's fine. But every little bit of damage helps. Also, by the way, I mentioned on turn 4, I wasn't sure why I still took fire damage. I actually replayed it and looked. The boss double cast fire on turn 4. So we did Nethysite one of them. The second one got through. I guess, technically speaking, we could have used Nethysite on Carton as well. If, I, if you have two sources. But... We took 50 damage, who cares? Um, and we, we gave him full evasion to take no damage from the AoE, because we, 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 we mirage a bunch of the AoEs, but not all of them. And he is a squishy four, a squishy five star, so, um, you know, uh, mirage. And then he, again, uses a water weapon. We imbue him with wind, so we dual element chain to help out with that. Um, star player Titus is using a katana, because we're doing Katana in Peril with Aurin, you always want to line up your weapon in Perils if possible. If you're not using Aurin, then you can give him a two-handed fist instead. Um, that would obviously hurt his damage because he can't wear fists naturally. But Carton is doing fist in Peril. Katana is way better just because, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't need a waste of slot for that. So again, not entirely budget. I am using, obviously, the necklace and the jug for his accessories, which are expensive. Um, but I'm not using the Aurin's card. Keep that in mind. You do not require an EX3 Aurin. Um, so here's his build. Full Demon Killer. Um, full LB damage. Max Demon. Max LB. And yes. And there's the party. Okay. So there it is. I'll post a turn chart in the comments as well. Um, this one is quite hard to damage cap. If you need help still, I can maybe try another clear. But... I gotta be honest here, if if I'm doing a perfect score run, it is going to involve either premium units or a hefty serving of STMRs on the party. I don't think it's possible to damage cap this guy if you're not using some sort of decent power level. It's pretty hard to damage cap him, but this worked. Also, my Esther clear is still up. I'm not gonna take it down, even though it was kind of janky because of the crash bugs. Um, it worked, and it did damage caps. I'll leave that up as well. But, uh, yeah, there's another way to damage cap Gehenna. Hope it helps. See you next time.